Welcome to our Thursday edition of the Investor Guys podcast. Billy, how you doing? I'm doing wonderful, my friend, and uh, look like you're doing well this morning. Doing well. Uh, super busy day, as you know. Um, I, let's, let's jump right into it. Last couple of days, if you guys watched Tuesday's show and you watched last Thursday's show, uh, we were talking about markets that are hot right now, and we're... This information is from a couple of different sources, but we're talking about markets that as of essentially end of April, beginning of May 2021 are showing up on uh, the radar as hot markets. Now, we talked about some different strategies last week to look at for these different properties. One of the things I want to point out, a couple of things I want to point out. First off, we don't expect you to and you should not think that you need to bounce around from hot market to hot market investing in real estate. So we're not saying Boise's hot and you should run off to Boise and invest in Boise. And as soon as Boise's not hot, cash out and go someplace else. If you're doing your investing by the numbers, okay, then you can buy in Boise. And then when there's another hot market, move on to another hot market and still be making the same amount or better in Boise. Remember, rents don't go down, okay? Rents only go up. It's very, very rare that you're gonna find rents that go down. So if you're doing your numbers and you're doing your strategies correctly, you shouldn't have to be cashing out of each one of these markets, buying these markets and then move on to the next hot market. And the other thing is, is you may not need, you may be perfectly fine where you are, may be perfectly fine with the strategies that you're using. You may not need to be looking at hot markets for, for additional investments. There are, however, tens of thousands of investors that are sitting in cool or lukewarm markets that should be looking at these markets because they're going to not only be able to make more money, they're going to do deals quicker because things are moving faster. Um, And again, it's all about the numbers. So look at the numbers, decide whether it works for you, for your strategies, and, and make sure that you're buying by the numbers so that you're not we're not buying flips okay we're not buying rehab properties not that they're not good strategies in some of these markets it's just we're looking for things that we're going to be able to capitalize on what is going on in those markets and one of the things that we forgot to mention bill um, but very very important is commercial properties whenever you have as much growth as you have in a market like say boise uh, a lot of those people who are moving to boise have brought their businesses with them or I know a lot of people who cashed out of their properties, um, took their early retirement, whatever it was, in California, moved to another state, Texas, uh, Boise is one of them, and started started a business. They used to work for somebody else, and they started the business that they always wanted when they yeah. when they moved. So commercial properties is something to absolutely keep an eye on in those markets. And another thing that I can tell you from experience is commercial properties are usually a little bit behind that residential curve. So once you see that residential curve moving up, start looking at commercial properties because that commercial property curve is going to start moving up right after that residential curve. So let's jump into it, Big Bill. So, uh, you know, one of the things you want to look at, and we talked about this briefly, but we want to talk about specific markets and the strategies for some of these. Uh, we talked about the, the decrease of inventory. All right, so when an inventory is is going down dramatically, uh, Boise is is a great example, uh, year over year down 58% um, from 12 months ago of what's available in the market. So I want to step back and go, whether I'm looking at at Boise or uh, there's a couple of Utahs on there, Provo's number two, uh, and Ogden is number nine on that list as far as decreasing inventory. So when I'm looking at that, I want to step back and go, all right, why is there such a dramatic increase or decrease, in this case, in the inventory in these markets? Well, one of the things you got, um, you want to look at tax structure for the market. And then you also want to look at things like uh, climate, jobs, uh, does it have resort area? You know, what's what's going on? Uh, is it in proximity to New York or California? And only because 
the two highest taxed states in the country, New York and California, with people that can't get out fast enough. And where are they going? Well, a lot of times uh, they're coming to Florida, they're coming to Texas, they're going to Nevada, but also they're going to Boise because Boise and Nevada both are a fairly close and, and Nevada really close uh, proximity. And so that makes a difference. So I want to look at what's drawing all these people to these cities that are making the inventories evaporate like they are. Because if I'm, I'm not looking at single family housing from a flip concept now, now what I'm looking at is if I see this inventory shrinking so dramatically in such a short period of time, the rental market is jumping. Uh, and it has, it's jumping up because People have to go somewhere. There's only so many bridges people can sleep under. So, you know, most of us prefer sleeping indoors. So if we can't find a house right now, we're going to go rent an apartment, even if it is for just a year, or six months or 18 months or whatever, while the new house is being built. Um, but a lot of these people, when they are moving, they're going to be uh, become longer term rentals. They may not be permanent renters, but they're going to become longer term renters. So when I look at a Boise uh, or I look at the two Utah, Provo and, and uh, Ogden, I also want to look at, you know, um, is there a college there? If there's a college there, then I've got the opportunity like Boise, Boise State. You got, um, I think uh, BYU is in Provo, I think. I'm, uh, so when you look at those, uh, you BYU start to is, go. BYU is in Provo, yes there's more opportunity, more rental opportunity there because there's a whole different segment of the market that, that is there uh, that is a predominant player in that market. Uh, so same thing, we've got uh, Raleigh, North Carolina. Uh, so you got uh, University of North Carolina, Raleigh uh, there. You've got the research triangle, people moving in like crazy. Uh, so you're going to have uh, rental opportunity uh, there. And anytime you have an increased rental opportunity, you have by default an increased Section 8 opportunity because properties that otherwise might have become Section 8 properties are not, they're getting a different uh, tenant in there. And so they're putting in people that are moving in and not using it for Section 8. So not only is the regular inventory shrinking like crazy, the Section 8 inventory is shrinking as well. Man, tons, tons of opportunities. All right, we are on break. Uh, we'll come back. we got a few more cities I want to mention on this particular uh, list as far as the shrinking inventory and how you can play with it. So hang around for more Investor Guys podcasts. Thanks for being with us. Be right back. 11 months out of the year, Bill and I host real estate buyers events in cities like Cleveland, Ohio, where we ourselves invest and see great returns. We show investors the types of strategies we're using, the types of properties we're using. We introduce them to people here on the ground and the resources that they can use to get started right away. Day four of this event, we're actually touring properties and making offers on properties. This event was designed to put properties in your portfolio right away. High performing properties. Read more about the Real Estate Buyers event. Get registered. We'll see you at the next event, realestatebuyersevent.com. My name is Kevin Mills. I have put together the absolute most comprehensive and complete real estate investor training program that I am going to stand behind it with a double your tuition back guarantee if it does not make you a millionaire. The program is called Millionaire Blueprint. In fact, we call it the Guaranteed Millionaire Blueprint. If you take this course and you follow exactly what we teach you in this course, I guarantee that you will be a real estate millionaire or I will give you double your tuition back. Read more about our guarantee, read more about this program, and even sign up for the next event at www.guaranteedmillionaireblueprint.com. That's guaranteedmillionaireblueprint.com. And we are back in. 
Uh, on today's show, and actually on the last two shows that we've done, we've been talking about markets that are hot right now and various strategies to consider for those different markets. Now, one thing you have to remember is everything is connected. It is, Bill was talking about how last week, how when people move into a market, uh, your rents go up, okay? And a lot of times it's because people are coming into a new market. And I've seen a lot of people who literally, they plan on moving to a market. And, and I, I've got friends who are planning on moving to Florida from California. And their strategy is they're gonna get an apartment for a year or two. And they may even get an apartment for a year, one place, and they get an apartment for, you know, a year in another neighborhood just because they want to try out different neighborhoods. They want to get familiar with the area before they invest in a house. It's a market that's new to them. They don't know where they're going to be landing. When people move into the market, we talked about how commercial properties increase in value and that's because there's more business with that more business that means there's more people being hired that means there's going to be more people coming in to work that may not be buying houses but they're going to need a place to stay uh, you're going to have an extra 50 60 100 people at the local target an extra 50 60 100 people at the local walmart those people may not be buying houses probably won't be buying houses at least half of them they need some place to live so look at the big picture. Consider all the different things that are going to be affected. Now, we're in real estate, but you have to, if you're looking at the big picture, there's going to be more people eating out at restaurants. There's going to be more people uh, going to the dog groomer. There's going to be more people buying cars at the car dealership. It's a big picture thing. So make sure you have a grasp of that when you're looking at these markets that are getting hot. Um, a lot of things that we might overlook, we're going to see when we start considering that big picture. Absolutely. So uh, we had a few more on, on these. You know, more and more, you've, you've heard us focusing more and more and more on passive income, on rental income, on Section 8 income. And, and there's rental and there's Section 8. And, and yes, Section 8 is part of the rental market, but you kind of look at them a little bit differently. Uh, and that rental market can be single family, it can be multifamily. And as Kevin's talking about, uh, it can be commercial. But so uh, we're going to have some cities that have colleges in them. And I call those asterisk cities. Uh, it's kind of like a state capital. Uh, they have a false economy there. And by that, what I mean is they have something that is unique to their location, uh, like every state capital. Uh, so the only uh, in Austin, Austin's the only city in Texas that from a real estate standpoint benefits from the state capital. Same, that's the true for any uh, state capital around. So then you turn around and you look at uh, cities that have universities, especially that have large universities in them. And there's another piece of the puzzle there. And then, so a lot of these markets, about half of them uh, have uh, universities in them. So we, we had talked about Boise, we talked about Provo, we talked about Ogden uh, in the Utah markets. Uh, on the last Thursday, we talked about Cleveland already. We mentioned Akron. Uh, so Columbia, South Carolina is on this as number seven in the decreased inventory uh, list. And Columbia has gone down 45.3% on a rolling 12 months uh, basis. So you got University of South Carolina there. So it's, it's an asterisk city. It's the capital of South Carolina. So you got a double asterisk going on there. And now you've had this massive decrease in available inventory. What do you think is happening to the rental market there? It is going up, 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 up. And it is just purely supply and demand. So again, when the rental market is going up, the inventory available for Section 8 is coming down. So there is tremendous opportunity uh, in the Columbia, South Carolina market. If you like college rentals, then there's a definitive space for that there. Um, you know, like a little higher end rental, well, that's gonna be your employees around the capital. Um, so you're gonna have a little bit higher market there. And then you've just got the normal stuff. Uh, you've got people moving into Columbia and I'm gonna see a increase in my rents if I'm doing straight rental and the city also will come back and the counties will adjust that on the HUD market uh, for Section 8 because, again, they understand that to attract you and I as investors. And that's what the Section 8 
housing opportunity is about. The government understands they don't want to go out and build and own and operate nine gazillion apartment complexes or single family houses. So they entice you and I as individual investors to come in and provide the property, provide the maintenance, do everything that is needed, and they're kind of hands off, but they're going to pay the rent. So it's a great, great market to be in, and Columbia is going to be uh, one of those. Uh, a surprise for me on this uh, list uh, at number six is Jackson, Mississippi. So one of the things you're going to see is this is geographically spread out really nice. In this top 10, you got uh, up in the northwest, you got Boise, Idaho, then more toward the middle, you got um, the Utah properties, you got South Carolina, Florida, uh, Mississippi down in the south, you got Ohio right there uh, by the Great Lakes. Uh, and um, you look at, uh, you got North Carolina in there. So, uh, and, and Bradenton, Florida is on there as well. Jacksonville and, and Bradenton, Florida. So you've got a nice geographic diversity. But when you start looking at any of these lists, take a look at, and it doesn't matter whether it's this list or another list, take a look at what does this mean to the real estate market there? Is that something appealing to me? Now, yeah, when we get back, because we're right pushing right up on a break, uh, we're gonna we're gonna change the list a little bit and it's gonna have a different impact. And then we're going to throw a couple of surprises in there that are going to be fun to talk about. So hang around. Um, Kev, you got something, uh, comment you want to make there? No, uh, you, you covered it well. And I, again, I just want to reiterate, focus on the big picture. Whenever you have movement into or out of a market, it's going to affect the overall the overall picture. It's, it's the overall economy of that particular market. But that economy is that big picture. Um, consider each one of these things a, a pretty big bubble or cell, I guess, might be the, the, the more correct uh, description of it. And you've got places like Austin, for example. Bill was talking about Austin. Austin not only has UT, which is one of the best schools that people want to yep. go to in, in Texas. It has UT. It is also the capital of Texas. As and well. what we're seeing right now, Austin is growing, but Austin is growing. Why? Who's moving to Austin? Lots of IT companies this last year have decided that they're moving to uh, Austin. Lots of technology companies, um, even some high-end uh, technological manufacturing companies are moving to the Austin area. What is it that we can take from that? What is it that's going to be a, a signal to us? What kinds of properties are we looking at? Who, who is going to be working at these companies and what types of properties are they going to be wanting to rent? You know, uh, Look at the big picture and how that affects the direction that we want to go for each one of these markets. Don't just jump in because Bill and I are saying Austin's a hot market. Do some research. You know, figure out why Austin is a hot market and why you want to invest in what you want to invest in in market. Sorry, in, in, in Austin or Boise or any of these other markets that we're talking about. So we're going to jump into a break and we'll be right back. GuaranteedMillionaireBlueprint.com. That's GuaranteedMillionaireBlueprint.com. You owe it to yourself to go there and check it out. If you are ready to become a real estate investor millionaire, like million dollars profit cash flow in your pocket every single year or more, GuaranteedMillionaireBlueprint.com. While you're there, check out the guarantee. Yeah, that's right. There is a guarantee that if you take this program and you follow what you learn in this program, you will become a millionaire. In fact, I'm going to return double your tuition back if this program doesn't make you a millionaire. Check it out. GuaranteedMillionaireBlueprint.com. That's GuaranteedMillionaireBlueprint.com. Once a month, with the exception of December, Bill and I go to markets where we have experience and we host a real estate buyer's event. These are markets that have great return potential for your real estate portfolio. We're going to show you the properties that we buy. We're going to show you where to buy, where not to buy, the strategies to use to make great income from these properties. We're also going to show you resources and individuals here on the ground that you can use to start building your team so that you can repeat this process over and over. The real estate buyers events are designed to put high performing properties in your portfolio right away. 
If you're interested in hearing more about the Real Estate Buyers Event, realestatebuyersevent.com. That's realestatebuyersevent.com. Read more about the events, check out the schedule, and register. We'll see you there. And we are back. And uh, yeah. Bill's going to mention another market here before we... Uh, before we wrap up, this is our last segment. So what was that last market? And then we've got some things I want to talk about uh, related to what we're talking about, but not specifically on the market. Cool. Uh, well, there were, I said we're going to change our list here. And so one of the things that uh, is in this particular Forbes list is the percent of change in the number of properties sold. So the amount of real estate closed in the last 12 months. And so you had, this is where we were talking about Albany and Syracuse the other day in the uh, last Thursday's show uh, being up dramatically. Um, so Baltimore is another city that uh, is up dramatically. Baltimore has over 50% more closings in real estate for the last 12 months. Uh, that's a big, big deal. Now the fun market on here is Honolulu. So Honolulu, this is the only Hawaii list or the only uh, city in Hawaii that made any of these five lists. So there's 50 cities mentioned uh, across these now, five. I'm going to ask you, Bill, have you ever yourself invested in Hawaii? I have not, but I, I uh, that is one of the cities that I have never invested in. Uh, I've been there many, many times, but I, I have wanted never, to really, I've and, never had the <clears throat> urge to invest in. And in I'll tell Hawaii. you what, I had an incredible urge and I learned a, a great lesson from it. I'm going to say uh, around early 2000, um, the Japanese stock market crashed. And in, in case you don't know this, um, the bulk of tourism in Hawaii is not from us, it's from Japan. Uh, that is the number one tourist destination for Japan. So when the stock market crashed, their economy was really pretty shaky there for a couple of years. And it had a huge impact on the real estate market in Hawaii. And so I'm reading some research and I'm seeing that uh, property is dropping like crazy. And in the first 60 days, it dropped like 40% in Hawaii. And so I was married at the time and I, I called my wife and I said, hey, I'm selling everything we own. I'm calling every lender that I have a relationship with, calling in every favor. I'm putting together every penny we can find, and we're going to go buy everything we can get our hands on in Hawaii. And I remember when that happened, and it wasn't just the stock market. It was actually the entire banking system. And I remember uh, doing some research myself on it because it, it didn't just affect Hawaii. I was in Southern California at the time, and it affected Japanese holdings in in everywhere uh they they do their banks their bank notes differently um, and a lot of banks were calling their notes they're able to call their notes before the term of the note uh if it meets certain requirements so they were literally calling notes on resort properties they're calling notes on apartment buildings they're calling notes on a lot of different things that japanese investors had that they had financed through japanese banks not that they had done through the u.s banks so I do remember that there was a, a, a big, big, big deal uh, for people who are paying attention to the Japanese stock market, the Japanese banking, uh, Japanese, any Japanese holdings, real estate or, or otherwise uh, around the world that have been financed by Japanese banks. I absolutely do remember that. So um, my uh, wife at the time said, what are you talking about? Why would we do that? And I said, well, it's down over 30, it's almost 40% down and it's Hawaii. And she goes, yes, so. And I'm like, well, it's going to come back. How do you know that? It's Hawaii. Well, yeah, what does that mean? I'm like, it's the greatest vacation spot on the planet, most beautiful. It's going to come back. Well, needless to say, we didn't buy anything. And a year and a half later, it had regained 40% plus. Uh, and so uh, what it did was it taught me to I was understanding because I was on the inside of the business. She was not. I was understanding it, but I was reacting emotionally and needed to be able to explain logically. And I wasn't prepared to do that. 
if I had put together a, uh, and this, uh, I created a whole hot mapping system based on that experience uh, that I've used and tweaked for years. Uh, but if I had to put together a presentation on that, I would have been able and, to- And real quick, before anybody boom, boom, boom. jumps and starts buying property in Hawaii, I want you guys to understand a few things about Hawaii. First of all, most of Hawaii, you're not gonna be buying the land that your property sits on. Most of most of Hawaii is what's called a master lease. Uh, it is land that is leased from the original Polynesian tribes that owned that land. So when you buy your house, you own the house and you're leasing the land that's underneath of it. At some point, and if you're talking long term, at some point that land is going to revert back to that Polynesian tribe and they'll probably renew the lease on it. However, this is what you need to consider in a situation like that. When you purchase the property, okay, because the amount of time that you have left on that land is going to be forever decreasing, that is going to affect the value of your property negatively. So let's say you've got five years before that lease expires and you don't know whether that's going to be renewed or not. How much value does your property have if you wanna turn around and sell it to another user and they understand that they may only have five years for that property before somebody's going to come in and bulldoze that house because it's sitting on property that they don't own. So consider those things when you're purchasing. And there's, there's other cities and other places in America that are like that. Hawaii, most of the entire state of Hawaii is like that. Uh, the city of Irvine, California, Irving, sorry, Irvine, California, Irving, Texas and Irvine. Yeah. Irvine, California is, is like that too. Much of it is under a master lease. So you can purchase properties, you own the property, but you don't own the land that it sits under. I see a lot of Americans go down to Mexico and they purchase properties yep. and they don't understand that it's also sitting on uh, land that is in a master lease. And after 25 years or whatever else, they don't own that land. And the person who owns the land comes in and takes the land and the properties that are on it. A lot of times the homeowners will just bulldoze the property because they don't want them to get the, 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 the house also. It's, it's a mess. So make sure you understand what you're getting into. Yeah. And Hawaii is one of those states. And that's one of the reasons why I was never big on wanting to invest in Hawaii. There's too many, too many moving pieces to keep track of. And there's too many better, easier places for me to want to invest in. But I, I, I do remember uh, the scenario that you're talking about. And yeah, that would have that would have been an interesting draw for sure. Now, I want to I want to bring up something really quick. Yep. We're talking about other markets. Okay. Bill and I, if you're interested, go to realestatebuyersevent.com. Bill and I do buyers events in some of these different markets we've even mentioned. We go to Cleveland, uh, we do Las Vegas, uh, we do the Dallas area, we do different Florida. cities in, yep. in Florida, yeah, Orlando usually. Um, we've got, uh, Cleveland I think is coming up pretty soon in June or July. So check out those dates. If you wanna learn how to invest in another market, and actually be in another market where you can invest the hot market where you're going to make good return on your investment and actually be able to buy properties while you are at the event. Check out realestatebuyersevent.com. Now, Bill, you also wanted to talk about um, something else that, that people can tap into as far yeah. as being able to follow us a little better. and, and Yeah, and you, you know, uh, a lot of people look, if you invest in real estate and have been for a while and, and are going to continue to, you're going to get to a point where you're using private money and you're going to get there because it allows you so much more opportunity. So we have a free training we want to give you. There's absolutely nothing uh, for you to buy uh, to get there. There's nothing for you to buy in the training. It is a free training. It is a, about an hour that I did on private money, and, and apparently my uh, German Shepherd's a private money fan because she's back there uh, going crazy right now. Uh, so a, who isn't a private money fan? Come on. Yeah, so jump over to real estate radicals. That's plural. Realestateradicals.com forward slash solid gold. I'm going to give you an hour long teaching on the solid gold money secrets. And that is the key to using private money, how to go about doing it. It's our gift to you for being a part of uh, the Investor Guys podcast. 
Uh, we're going to ask for your email, uh, your name and email there. That's going to sign you up automatically to get our notifications when new episodes come out. We're, we're uh, every Tuesday and Thursday, 3 o'clock Eastern, uh, but you'll get a notification, hey, there's a new episode about to come out, join us. Uh, and so we appreciate you guys. We wanted to do this as a way to say thank you. Uh, so you see the link on the page here. It is rad realestateradicals.com, realestateradicals.com forward slash solid gold. And uh, enjoy. You'll have some fun with it. And it's good, usable content. Yes. And uh, as always, we love hearing your feedback. You can reach either of us at contact at uh, investorguyspodcast.com. That's contact at investorguyspodcast.com. Uh, if you need previous episodes, you can find those at investorguyspodcast.com. All you got to do is just click on the podcast. Uh, all the shows show up there typically the day that they're available. So Tuesdays and Thursdays, you'll see new episodes uh, or within you know 24 hours of that, depending upon where the website is as far as uh, updates and everything else. Thank you for being part of our Investor Guys podcast family with uh, brother, brother Bill and brother Kevin, I guess. There you go. And uh, we will see you guys back here on Tuesday. Until then, uh, do some research. If you're not investing in real estate, you need to get started. Uh, you've heard us say it over and over and over again. My favorite saying is best time to plant a tree was 20 years ago. Second best time is now. So if you didn't plant that tree, get on it, get it done. Yeah. The, every started. day, every day you wait is a day that is wasted that you will never, ever, ever get back. It's a day you could be making money that you didn't. So get on it and we will see you guys on Tuesday. Have a great weekend. Bye everybody. Thank you.